Good morning, Foresters. Um, we've been kind of slacking on our videos here lately. Between I had kidney stones attack and everybody's been sick with the flu and not feeling good. Amy's feeling kind of blah. Um, but I'm going to give you guys just a little bit update on what we've been doing. Um, as I'm doing the morning chores. And let you see what's been going on. Well, guys, we decided to uh, divide and conquer. I am taking care of the turkeys. That we moved back over to the old chicken pen um, that is overgrown with sweet potatoes and wild Everglades tomatoes. They've trumped them down. I've trumped them down a little bit. But we've moved the turkeys over here because uh, they were fighting with stupid, our rooster. And one of the turkeys ended up with an injured eye. So we moved them over here to try to protect them. You know, or protect the, actually protect uh, stupid more from the tom roosters. I mean, the tom turkeys. But, uh, we've had them over here for a few days. And I brought over this doghouse. I'm going to put some hay in it for them. And hopefully they'll go in there at night because it's supposed to be getting cold. Um, they haven't been using the doghouse. We thought they would use the doghouse, but they haven't. We've got hay in here. And I'm going to get some here. Let's get some of this hay. And throw it in for these turkeys. Sunday we're supposed to get some cold weather. It's supposed to get down into the 40s. So hopefully these guys will go in there and try and stay warm. 40s not too cold for these guys. They could probably roost. They've been roosting up here on the old compost pile. Um, but they're in here just temporarily until I get a turkey pen built. I'm going to try to start on it this weekend, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Amy's got a lot of chores for me to do, and we got a lot of stuff to try to get caught up on since everybody's been sick and my kidney stones. We fell way behind on everything. All right. Um, see, I got their water over here. They're fed. Um, we're going to have to build another feeder for them. We tried using this smaller chicken feeder that I made. We got a lid for it, but they weren't eating out of it. So I just, so I'm just dumping it into these old chicken feeders we had over here that we used to use for them. Uh, well, the turkeys are pretty much taken care of. So I'm going to move on and see what else Amy has on me for the list. All right, next on our list is uh this crate uh this is a temporary house that we made for boots our outside cat when he showed up um we threw this together real quick just so he had some place to get out of the weather um it's worked but not exactly what we want um but jenny gave us a, all these dog houses she gave us like four of them so we're going to take one of the smaller ones and put up here and put some hay in it for boots to have a better place to sleep at night. And that's a little more waterproof than what this is. So I'm going to go get it and bring it up here and we'll swap these out. All right, we got the doghouse in place. And uh, there's his food and water bowls. We'll put that in there too. But he'll come up for breakfast every single morning. And every evening we give him a little bit too. But he does not touch his water. He will not drink the clean water that we give him. He'd rather drink water out of the ditches, which I'm 
I don't know what to do about there. Maybe one of you guys would have a clue what to do to get him to stop drinking the ditch water and actually drink the clean water that we give him. Um, like I say, he's a bit of a wild cat. He just kind of showed up here. He was skin and bones and we started feeding him and made this makeshift shelter here for him and uh, he's stayed. We give him lots of lovings and he really enjoys that. But uh, he likes to do his own thing and for some reason he just does not like clean water maybe he's never had clean water before but we put some hay in here for him because he doesn't like to we put towels in that other thing for him to sleep on and he would never really lay in it so I'm hoping this hay is more natural for him. Maybe more something that he'll uh, enjoy and maybe uh, sleep in there at night or stay in there out of the weather. So that's one more thing off of uh, the honeydew list. All right, next on the to-do list is some car maintenance. Look at these battery cables, this one in particular. Um, I'm gonna have to do some cleaning up on these. Um, you don't have to be a mechanic to do this. This is pretty darn simple. Uh, my dad was a master mechanic. Um, I fiddle with cars. I don't do too much, especially nowadays with these newer cars, but uh, This is something simple to do and easy to take care of. Kind of do it holding a camera and watching what you're filming and doing this at the same time though is a bit of a trick. there we go cleaned up battery cables okay here is the next chore that we got I got to finish unloading this trailer I already unloaded the fence and some chain link stuff here um, this is some of the stuff that um, one of our subscribers Jenny gave to us along with this tractor it needs a new battery and a bearing in the mowing deck. Um, I'm probably gonna just take the mowing deck off of it and use it to pull that little trailer that has all the junk on top of it there, uh, just to help move dirt and stuff around the uh, the, the homestead here. Uh, she also gave us a whole bunch of these four by fours and some three quarter inch plywood that they use for making uh trusses i mean not trusses plywood for making forms for concrete you can see here's a sheet of that plywood right here um we're going to make this is a six foot chain link fence we're going to make the turkey pin out of and this is some of the posts and stuff that they gave us too that we're going to use now i've never done chain link before and we're not going to do it like a normal chain link fence anyways we don't have enough poles top poles and stuff like that so we're going to use some of these t-bars t-posts and uh we're going to do our best to make a nice turkey run for uh, the two breeding turkeys and i'm probably going to put that right here in this area 
underneath this oak tree. So I'm gonna have to clear it out. And uh, we used a tractor with forklift to put this in here. And you can see my dilemma right here is I'm having trouble trying to figure how to get it out. That's why I've stopped where I did the other night when I was unloading this after work. But I think I have a plan on how to get this off of here. And, uh, but I'm gonna need Amy's help. So as soon as she's done with the chore she's doing, she's gonna come out here and give me a hand. And I am going to figure out where I can set you guys up so you can watch it. This should be interesting. It almost looks like a happy face here. <laughs> this isn't cars. <laughs> That's how you move a tractor. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is another one of my chores that I had to do, or the to-do list, not really a chore. Um, the truck has a radiator that leaks just a little bit. What happened is the radiator got clogged, um, a clogged radiator. I used this stuff to clean out the radiator, but it took the radiator and put leaks in it. So now it actually ate some holes in the radiator or it just had so much debris, the holes were clogged up anyways. I'm not sure which, but now the radiator has some really small leaks and the thermostat was stuck. Um, so what I did is what I call shade tree engineering mechanic work. And I did not video this because we try to be a family friendly uh, channel. And if I'm working on any vehicle old or newer than the 70s, it's not gonna be family friendly. There's not a lot of stuff that's gonna make me cuss like a sailor, but working on a newer car will. But I didn't have a gasket, so I took the cereal box and cut me out my old gasket and I put it in there. I took the thermostat out right here, which was stuck, and there's no thermostat in this, and the radiator. Blowing pretty good, so I'm happy with that. Temperature. Now let me say, this is a temporary fix at best. I'm just getting it going because I need to be able to use this on the homestead to go get wood chips from the other side of the property where we have them dump it so that I can spread it out in the food forest. And I'm hoping that I can, all this stuff that we dug out when we cleaned up the chicken pen and other areas, this is all come, came out of the ground and different burn holes that we found or just covered up in the woods. And I wanna haul this junk to the dump. Um, we try to reuse everything we can but this stuff is just too far gone, not usable. I mean, look, that's a burnt bed.
frame or a bed mattress or I look like a box spring in a mattress that we found buried out here so and I need this truck to be able to work you know to haul these this stuff off so uh, I did a temporary fix and I'll be testing it out around the property before I take it on any long runs to the dump uh, but I can check this off of my to-do list all right guys uh, I'm uh, gonna harvest some stuff for a salad tonight to go along with dinner I'll be making spaghetti and uh, we want to have a nice little salad with it so I'm going to harvest some lettuce here we'll get a couple of different kinds I'll let that one grow easy have some kale <clears throat> do some kale in with our salad not a lot Let's do some cauliflower. You got some little heads. This one looks like it is going to seed. I don't know why our cauliflower is so small. Let's do some broccoli too. Get down in here and cut them off. That should make some tasty salad. Let's throw in some tomatoes. There's another one. The little tomatoes for mom and Amy. We got any more here that the turkeys didn't beat us to? Got a little handful of tomatoes here for the ladies. There we go. That'll make a nice little side salad with our spaghetti. Let's see. Let's take out some of these carrots. They're a little small. I'm gonna pick out some of the bigger ones. Not very big yet, but they'll be good enough for our salad tonight. <laughs> 